Good evening, gang. This is The Roaming Prepper, and today I am going to be covering a few things to pay attention for for the Saturday sit rep. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff to cover, and I'll try and get to it pretty quick so you guys can get back to your Saturday nights. First and foremost, uh, Texas Grid. Let's talk about the Texas Grid for a hot minute. Um, then we'll go to immigration and China diplomacy. So... KHOU is a news station out of Houston, Texas. Uh, this is a little bit of a dated article, but no, don't want that. The ERCOT CEO in a hot seat. ERCOT is the commission uh, for the energy grid of Texas. It's supposed to be an independent grid uh, that oversees the maintenance of the commission. Now, apparently 20-something years ago, we had another freeze similar to this one. Uh, lo and behold, they didn't update the uh, grid because it's such a rare thing to have negative double-digit temperatures for days on end in Texas. But lo and behold, we did. And, uh, you know, it shut the grid down. People died. So the feds, aside from the state, the feds had hearings as well. Um, but MSN Money is... Uh, claiming that the providers point to a failure of natural gas supply. What happened to a lot of folks, is, or a lot of folks don't realize, is the, the gas transmission system, a lot of the valves and tubes froze because of the cold, and it would not allow them to redirect a lot of the fuel. So power plants basically starved. Some of them just shut down outright. Um, and again, like I covered on a previous video, uh, the solar panels were covered with ice and the uh, the windmills basically froze in place. Uh, ironically, they were dumping diesel from the oil wells on the green uh, fan blades to try to get them moving again. So the state had a series of hearings and then the uh, the feds also had a hearing. U.S. House of Representatives uh, yesterday, and they're talking about winterizing. This is, uh, sorry, World Socialist website. So this is interesting. I found these guys. I'm going to keep an eye on this. Um, super curious what these, what this little place is about. Global class struggle, capitalism and inequality. Oh, I'm going to have fun with this page. Anyway, um, I digress. But they did point out that uh, they uh, the United States House Committee on Science Space Technology held a hearing on the grid. Um, I didn't know they named it URI, but all right. Uh, in any case, uh, the feds are trying to decide uh, how they want to intervene. Unfortunately for them, the way the state of Texas grid is set up, it literally doesn't transmit anything across state lines. So per the Constitution, it is not a interstate commerce and falls under state mandate, not federal. I'm sure they're going to gnash their teeth at that. Address the social crime that transpired. I won't even touch that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this was just a big misfortune uh, due to national, uh, or rather due to uh, an unexpected weather event that's so rare it, it took down the grid. But... I'm super curious about these guys. I'm going to keep an eye on this just for y'all. But in any case, there are hearings going on both at the Fed and state level regarding uh, regarding why the grid went down and how to prevent it. Now, I did drive through the, uh, the wind farm that's near where I live, and it's a massive one. You could drive past it for 20 minutes at 70 and continue to see the windmills out here or the turbines. And they were all moving. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went out there, and there was uh, cherry pickers and other construction around them. So it looks like they're back up. The drilling rigs have been moving since two days after everything thawed. And uh, the solar panels got cleaned off pretty quick. There's actually a solar farm to the west of me and a wind farm to the east of me uh, with oil and gas scattered throughout. So everything seems up again. Uh, let's see where it goes. Uh, we don't need federalization of all this stuff, but they definitely need to upgrade uh, that grid. 
So second thing, immigration. Well, uh, it turns out that uh, it's gotten so bad that the Biden administration has had to reverse what they were doing and they are now deporting families. However, at the same time, they just created a facility, one in Midland and one, I don't know if it's in Lubbock or somewhere in Arizona, where they're housing what they call children, but it's actually males, all males, between the ages of 15 to 17. Um, that's kind of concerning. That's a pile, hundreds of young men. No females, not families. They're apparently deporting the families with small children, like this poor lady here, but they're keeping piles of teenagers in these facilities. What's worse, they did not tell, if, at least for the Midland Odessa facility, they did not tell the Midland or Odessa mayors they were doing it until they started asking them for police to help patrol as they built fences and the local government said what the hell were you talking about and lo and behold they just popped out a facility um to be fair i'm sure you know a lot of these folks are just scared and hungry but in those of you who've been overseas 15 to 17 years old in foreign countries could be considered military aged males that's concerning that's not including people we don't see coming across. Uh, a lot of the migrants are actually confused. Uh, they look on the TV, they think they can come, and then they get deported or they get detained. So the feds need to step up, uh, Congress and the president, and make some kind of coherent uh, action to make it a little more sensible for these folks because people are suffering uh, and there's a lot of panic, and there's no need for either. So, uh, you know, we'll keep the ch the small children in our prayers. This is unfortunate, but, uh, the, you know, fo there, there's got to be a more cohesive way to do this. Um, and, you know, uh, there are a lot of charities that are trying to help these families. Um, you know, I feel a lot of sympathy for the, especially with the small kids. But, uh, like I said, popping out, detain facilities for young male teenagers or in some places just entire facilities full of grown men over the age of 18 and they're not telling local authorities and local government that they're doing it until the very last minute uh, it's very ill-planned it's not good for the immigrants it's not good for the local folks so they need to figure something out last but not least uh, going back to China, so so the uh, let me close some of this here, and uh, there we go. Sorry, folks. Um, so China and our ambassador to China, or uh, Secretary of State, met with the Chinese. It did not go well. They dinged each other across the table. Um, China took a lot of jabs at us. Uh, I'm happy to see that the new administration, much like President Trump before with uh, a lot of his uh, restrictions against China and some sanctions, is continuing that. Um, in particular, they brought this up again, which I discussed on a previous video, the South China Sea. Um, just to give you all some perspective, you know, these Spratly Islands right here, uh, China has all these bases. China's way up here. They're nowhere near this. They're claiming bases everywhere. I covered this on another video. Here's where it's getting concerning. These are shipping lanes and maritime claims. And, and what do you see here? You see China, right? Well, those islands we just saw right here. Uh, it's impeding now Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, um, and Malaysia just had an outright coup. So uh, for those of you who may know Malaysia by its old name, Burma, um, but pay attention to this one, guys, because if something gets hot here, or they get into some kind of conflict, it's within China's power and ability to start either blockading or stopping commerce. 
look what's here. Up here's Japan. You can't see it. Taiwan, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. Over here is India, Thailand. A lot of the imports we get of com consumer goods comes from here. A lot of our agricultural exports and vehicles and equipment exports come here. This would be very disruptive to the U.S. economy, which is on shaky ground right now. It would hurt China more because they have a lot more mouths to feed. But there's uh, there's issues, and actually I stand corrected, Burma's over here, Malaysia's different, I apologize for that. Um, I'm thinking Miramar is over here, which is Burma, not Malaysia. Um, in any case, pay attention to this because what happens here, and a lot of smart guys on YouTube, Pinball uh, brought it up, a few other guys did. I don't know if Angry Prepper did. Um, this can bite us. Um, they start embargoing, and we're printing money over here for stimulus. We get inflation, and then we have a material shortage. We're going to see prices spike badly. And it's going to hurt the day-to-day -day people out here who are working for a living. So pay attention to that, guys. Uh, that's important. All right. Well, that sums up uh, my rant for today. You guys be safe. Pay attention to what's going on both at the border, which is a very unfortunate situation, and also this China situation. The grid in Texas is back up. I'm hoping they're going to address that. But China's bugging me, guys. Um, Maybe I've been reading too many Tom Clancy's, but uh, that can bite us. It's going to get destabilized over there if we're not careful. You guys take care. Be safe. Godspeed. And keep an eye out.